Hey, what is up guys and welcome back. So you're probably wondering what you're looking at right now. Right now we're going to be doing the run cam split to S latency test. I've already done its review. Many people thought I didn't like it in my review, but actually I do like it. I was just telling you it's just a bit power hungry. It gets kind of toasty and that's about it. But it's reliability in recording is quite phenomenal. It's actually remarkable of how reliable this thing is. And it's something that I really love about this. Now, a while ago, you, many of you also said you wanted to see the latency test. However, I broke it before I got to the latency test and it's not just breaking it breaking I actually just got the the ribbon here ripped apart and at the time there was nowhere to purchase that ribbon So I wrote run cam six hours later uh, I told them I would like to purchase two six hours later. They wrote back. They say hey, no problem. We'll send you two free of charge Awesome and here we are today. I connected it. Everything's still working and it survived some really really hard crashes some inav launch control fails basically which is full throttle to the ground, and that is being the first thing in the front, and it survived beautifully on Azad Orbit, so I'm in love with that. Now, let's do the latency test. We've already done the latency test on the Cadex Turtle V2, which are these two, the Cadex Turtle V2, Norncam Split 2S, is uh, the latest and greatest uh, HD recording type FPV cameras currently we have in the market. So we're going to compare them also because I've done that test before. And also just a side note before you guys go and bomb my comments is that while it's recording and while it's not recording, the latency is just about the same. There is no difference. There is the same exact fluctuation. However, I feel this one to be slightly faster. But again, we're going to do a live test right now. So enough talking. Let's jump to the live test and uh, we'll take it from there. Taking our first sample and there we go. We got our first result in. So as you can tell, the bottom here is when the LED turned on and it just continued on. And as you can tell here, this is the video signal coming from the run cam. As you can tell, there is no change, which is black, 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 black or darkness. And then it noticed the LED turn on right here when it actually turned on here. So we can calculate the difference by looking at the results here. So let's go ahead and set that up and see what is our current latency here? So we got 18.4 milliseconds currently on our first test. Let's go ahead and take another test or another sample, I should say. Okay, so here we go. We got another one. It's pretty consistent. It's a little bit more. And it's 19.8 milliseconds. And the reason why I'm moving the oscilloscope is because I can't read it on the way that it's currently set up. So, yeah, and I can't see it on the camera screen. So we're taking another sample here. And it is pretty consistent. Now, I also want to try something. I'm going to keep this running a little bit longer than I did before. So it's 18.6 milliseconds currently. And what you want to see is below 25 milliseconds. Below 25 milliseconds is golden. Below 20 milliseconds is awesome. And anything below that is just super great. But once you hit 30 to 35 milliseconds, then it gets pretty terrible. Uh, here we got 12 milliseconds of latency. Let's take another test. So what I want to do is I want to let this run for a while and the board tends to heat up because it takes a lot of amperage. So that turns into heat and I want to see if the heat will actually increase the latency. And that's going to be pretty interesting. So right now we got 15.6 milliseconds. And from, you know, going through my mind, I believe this is doing a lot better than the Cadex Turtle V2 in terms of latency. Here we got a pretty big one. So this is 23.6 milliseconds. This is the longest or the largest uh, latency we've gotten. Let's go ahead and take another. Okay. And what do we have here? It's a little bit less than last time, that's for sure. And it's 22.4 milliseconds. So it's doing pretty good. It's below the 25 millisecond range. And uh, most of the results were below 20 milliseconds here. So that's something really nice you want to see. Uh, that basically means you're not going to feel the latency uh, as much. 20.6 milliseconds, that's still really good. We'll take another one just, just for the heck of it. This one's really good, actually. Uh, what is it? 13.6 milliseconds. So that's, that's really awesome. So it from my, you know, just remembering how the Cadex Turtle V2 tested, this is, seems like it's doing a lot faster. Now let's go ahead and switch over to the LED turning off. Now in some cameras, when the LED is turning off, that is when I'm seeing the most, the latency just increases for some reason. So let's go ahead and set that up real quick. Okay, so we want falling and we're just going to drop it to here and let's go ahead and take our first sample. Now, this is the LED turning off. First, we were watching on the LED turning on and there we go. We see an increase right away and we can see that right there at 26.8 milliseconds. So it's still within the threshold and um, 
I think the more realistic test is the test where we're actually turning on the LED more than turning off the LED. 19 milliseconds. It's still good. That is awesome. And this one, let's see. 29.4 milliseconds. We almost hit that 30 millisecond threshold, but it's still within the 35 millisecond threshold here. And it's rare that it does. That's 23 milliseconds. That's still pretty good. So overall, this camera's latency is, uh, is good. It's actually almost the same as just a normal uh, basic FPV camera. Some cameras have the same amount of latency here. Okay, so this test is 33.2 milliseconds. It's a little bit above. And as you can tell, I think it's because the board is heating up, but I could be totally wrong. Right now, we're going to switch again to the LED turning on. This has just got a lot faster here. 17.8 milliseconds. So this again, this is the LED turning off here. And you can interpret this data the way you want. Um, so you can take it the way you'd like to take it. And here, oh, another one, 17.8 milliseconds, nice. Take another sample. And then we're gonna switch, like I said, back to the LED turning on and seeing, because the board is currently, I know it's getting a bit warm because it's, it's drawing about one amp of power, 28.2. So right now I'm gonna go ahead and switch it to when the LED is actually turning on. So let's go ahead and do that. There we go, we're taking our first sample of the LED booting up here. 20.8 milliseconds. Okay, that's still good. Let's see. Oh wow, this one's even better. Probably around 18, let's see. Ooh, 14.2 milliseconds. It's really good. I actually got one test where I got nine milliseconds, but I haven't gotten it again. So it's capable to have some very low latency and it also has these little hiccup moments where the latency does increase above 25 milliseconds, but it never really breaks the 31 millisecond threshold, neither the 35 millisecond threshold. That is the threshold that where things just start getting, um, you're just not going to be able to fly as good. 17.4 milliseconds here. And what do we have? 16 milliseconds. Yeah, so the board heating up isn't really affecting its latency as I thought it might have. And I, I just thought it was just a small theory just to test just for fun. So this is 20.8 milliseconds here. So it's overall doing really good in terms of latency. Uh, the run cam is, for, for the quality also that it's outputting, It's this is quite amazing. Uh, it's, a, it's a really good one. And we're gonna s expect to see even lower latency soon, but this is a very, very acceptable latency. And um, especially for freestyle flying or just chilling, or planes and stuff. You can even go with a higher latency if you're gonna be putting on a plane, but this for a quadcopter is recommended. However, for racing, that's a whole different story because the latency does fluctuate quite, uh, it's not it's not as dramatic as the uh, Cadex Turtle V2, but um, it does fluctuate. And that is something normal, because you can see where, like right here, we have the LED turned on, right in the beginning of a half of a frame, as you can tell right there, that's when the LED turned on. And then it skipped this whole half a frame and about half of the other frame, which is the second part of the first frame, we'll call this one frame here because two of these is one frame because they're interlaced. So yeah, so this is considered a frame. So this is a half a frame and then the second half of the frame it started showing it up. So it, it caught, it registered the LED booting up basically. We'll just take another one just for fun. All right, this one's a little bit better. Let's see here. It's about here. And that is what? 18.2 milliseconds. So I would give this an average of 20 milliseconds of uh, latency, even possibly less. Uh, but 20 second mi millisecond latency seems just about right for more 18, whatever you want. You can decide for yourself here. Overall, it's a good camera. Its latency isn't going to affect your flying at all. Not like uh, using one of those. Let me see, which what are they called? The, uh, the devices that basically let, allow you to watch your FPV video feed on your phone, like from Eosheen and stuff, those latency is 50 milliseconds, or roughly around 50 milliseconds, and that does really affect your flying quite dramatically. 20 milliseconds will not affect your flying, because most of the uh, run cam, I think Swift's, Swift 2 and the Foxier XAT are roughly in this area. They're around the 15 millisecond range. And uh, this is performing just as good with the occasional uh, above 25 millisecond latency. So overall, it's a good camera. I've been using it. It survived. It's way better than the earlier releases. Those were absolutely terrible. This one is a completely different story. And I'm actually reaching out for it quite often. And the reliability of its recording has been superb. And, well, 
That's it, guys. If I did help you make a purchase or avoid a purchase, please consider using the links down below. I also do have a Patreon if you can support me there. That'll keep this channel afloat. And if you guys have any questions or any suggestions, feel free to let me know. And I'll see you in the next one. Peace out.